Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and uh, welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, just uh, made my channel public uh, earlier today and I promised to cover a variety of topics from weather extremes to uh, climate science to the Mets to music. And so I'm going to start off with a video about uh, the climate issue and uh, hopefully this will uh, not be uh, politically provocative. It's certainly not intended to be. As I have mentioned many times, uh, I rely on peer-reviewed literature. Uh, the peer review process is a self-policing process which has worked well for decades and it continues to work well today. And so there's no room for political advocacy on this issue on either side. It's simply a matter of science. Okay, so uh, the one thing I want to talk about first of all is to give some credit where some credit is due and that's the fact that back in the late 1970s, a couple of gentlemen down at the University of Alabama at Huntsville developed a revolutionary technique for detecting global temperatures via satellite. And this was really important because three quarters of the planet is covered by water. And so we have high density of observations over land, but not nearly as many observations over water, which again covers 75% of the planet. And so the satellites were a way to look at the entire Earth get a global picture of what the temperature in the lower troposphere is doing and of course that technique has been perfected over time uh, but uh, again uh, these two gentlemen John Christie and uh, let me uh, get their names up on the screen here there we go Roy, Roy Spencer and John Christie were the two gentlemen that developed that technique and it was a uh, very very significant contribution to our science okay so I'm going to throw up a couple of complicated graphs here and we'll try to make some sense of them First of all, this is the global satellite temperature record. Uh, and again, this record is kept monthly at the University of Alabama at Huntsville. All those blue dots indicate the monthly temperature from late 1978 all the way through July of 2022. The August uh, readings are not out yet. Okay, so if you draw a trend line, the best trend line through all of those dots, you get that solid blue line that you see there and obviously it is trending upward and so the global temperature has been overall been trending upward over the course of the last uh, what 44 years okay now what i thought would be interesting to do instead of looking at a whole 44 year period is split it up into four 11 year periods because there are natural cycles to the global temperature and we've seen that uh, uh, many many uh, uh, kinds of evidence support that and so I thought, let's split it up into four 11-year periods and see what we get. Well, the first uh, sort of a tan or a light orange line there uh, indicates only a slight increase from 1978 to 1989. Then there was a significant uptick from 1989 to the year 2000. Then it leveled off again. In fact, it actually went down a little bit from 20, uh, 2000 to 2011. And then the increase over the last 11 years has been even more rapid than what we saw from 1989 to 2000. So it looks like a little bit of a stair step, doesn't it? Where it's sort of level, then it goes up, then it's sort of level, and then it goes up again. Well, can we make some sense out of that using a mathematical model? Well, what I've done here, and uh, again, what we're looking at here is two different functions. The green line is just your typical sine wave, and I use that to represent the natural cyclical nature of the global temperature. Okay, the red line in indicates the steady increase in carbon dioxide, which is well documented. Uh, the observatory at Mauna Loa, Hawaii has been taking those measurements for a long, long time. I think back to about 1950, and it's steadily increasing. There's no question about that. Okay, so when you add those two functions together, okay, at all of these different times, here's what you get. The narrow uh, gray line, the dotted gray line that you see there, indicates an increase for 11 years. Then it levels off, maybe even goes down just slightly for 11 years. Then it goes up again for 11 years, and then it levels off again for 11 years. And that's about what we have seen over the course of the past 44 years. And so it makes sense uh, if you impose this steady increase in carbon dioxide with the cyclical nature, the natural cyclical nature of our global temperature, that you would get this kind of an outcome. And it appears that's exactly what we're seeing. Now, there have been a lot of arguments put forth like the following. The Earth has been hotter than it is right now. Absolutely correct. You're dead on, okay? Argument number two. 
there's been more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there is now. Absolutely right. Once again, there are natural cycles to our temperature. Again, dead on, absolutely correct. The thing that makes what we're seeing now unique is the fact that these changes are occurring over a much shorter time scale than anything we have seen in the past. These changes occurred over thousands, if not tens of thousands of years, where we're seeing these increases now of a similar magnitude over a much, much shorter period of time. And that is the concern. And also the fact that we have seen an uptick in the number of uh, serious uh, weather events uh, over the course of the past uh, 30 or 40 years is al also somewhat concerning. In fact, it's very concerning. Now, uh, I have a, a very dear friend, uh, Kerry Emanuel, who is a professor up at MIT, and uh, he, in, in our field, is one of the true giants. I mean, the, the man is just an absolute flat-out genius and has published many, many peer-reviewed papers that have uncovered some significant advances in our science. And I was talking to him one time, and he brought up uh, this issue in a way that it made total sense to me. Number one, and really the only point that he made, is that it all boils down to risk assessment. And he said, if, uh, he said, we all know what risk assessment is about because when we get in the car to drive to work every morning, we assess the risk of being in an accident. Most times we accept that risk, and most times it works out. Not always, but most times it does. So the thing is, if there is a way to minimize the risk without doing undue harm to people, why isn't that something we could all buy into together and stop fighting over the issue, okay? Now, the thing is, even if you feel like the chance of catastrophic climate change is small, there are such things as low probability, high impact events. In other words, you may not think the chance is all that high of it happening, but if it does, you're screwed, okay? So again, if there is a way to minimize that risk, no matter how high or low you think it is, without doing harm to society or to individuals, again, why isn't that something we could work on together instead of fighting back and forth? So that's where I stand on the issue. Again, uh, I'm not in the business of politics at all. I simply look at peer-reviewed literature. I look at evidence. I look at the way the atmosphere and the climate actually behaves. Uh, it may interest you to know, just one final thought here, that without the natural amount of greenhouse gases that we have in the atmosphere, the Earth would be an uninhabitable snowball. The global temperature would be 60 degrees cooler than it is now with that natural amount. So a very small amount of something can make a huge difference in whether or not the Earth is fit for life or not. And so it only stands to reason that if you double that, the impacts could be very, very significant, at least in theory. So that's it for today. Hope you found that interesting. And we'll be having more videos coming up about a variety of different topics. I'll probably be complaining about the Mets if they lose some more games, <laughs> and I'll be sharing that frustration with you. And also, the North Myrtle Beach Community Band that I play in is going to be starting rehearsals next Thursday night, and so I'll probably be sharing a little bit of that information with you as well. All right, hope you found this fun and educational, and we'll be back uh, soon with more videos. We'll see you then.